So let's start with importing items. So this is a very underused feature in QuickBooks Online, which is to take a spreadsheet and import it into QuickBooks. But there's a lot of couple of nuances around importing them. A lot of uh, people tend not to use inventory in QuickBooks because there's such a big inventory list and they say, you know what, forget it. I don't even want to deal with it. So let's start with how that would work. So you click on the gear menu on the, on the right, on the top right of the screen. Okay. And we're going to click on where it says import data. And then we're going to click where it says products and services. Okay. So we're going to assume that you have a spreadsheet that looks like this. I also included the spreadsheets in the handout section. And there's also a link to the sample uh, spreadsheet on the, on the presentation itself. And this is really important because this is a template. And if you follow this template, your importing will work really, really, really well. So this is what the sheet looks like. I'm going to add one more item here. I'm going to call this glass fountain. Okay, let's say, for example, we have a product called glass fountain, and we'll call this, uh, we'll put a description here, smoked glass fountain. We'll give this a SKU number. We'll call this an inventory part. Notice I'm literally just copy and pasting with what's there now. Let's say we sell this for $250. We make this taxable. We're going to send it to the sales account. On the purchase description, I'm going to copy and paste the sales description. And again, you may already have this coming in from a vendor or from another QuickBooks database or some other accounting database, right? I mean, that could work. So then we got $125 for the cost. The expense account, I'm going to go ahead and copy. Cost of goods sold. And let's say that on this import, I'm bringing a quantity on hand. So I'm going to bring in 20 uh, let's do 20. And let's say the reorder point is 20. We'll talk about reorder points in a second. And then we'll make this inventory asset. And then we'll make this 1231 uh, 2017. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and delete all the other ones that are there. And we're simply going to, for the sake of the example, we're going to import one item. This one called glass fountain, smoke glass fountain. There's a skew, all the information there. And again, if you use the same template, you're going to have a really positive experience bringing in uh, the information. If you don't want to bring quantity on hand, then you would just put zero there and you would put quantity as of date. Just put, I usually put the closing of the previous year is typically what I do, or maybe 1-1-2018 one, one, or something like that. But if, if so, this is up to you whether or not you want to bring in uh, a, a starting balance. So it's, the, the, you know, the type of engagement tells that. For the most part, we don't bring uh, starting balances, I, but but if you do, it will do it. Now, how much you would bring the starting balance for? It would be a multiplication between quantity on hand and purchase cost, right? So uh, let me just multiply them real quick so we know what that would be. So what's going to come in is $2,500 are going to come in into opening balance equity when I import this. Now, if you actually have a current cost that is different than your historical cost, pay attention to this. If you're importing items, with a beginning balance. If your historical valuation cost that you're importing is different from your current purchase cost, make sure that when you import it, you bring the historical cost and then you change it after the fact because that is going to use um, the purchase cost that's in this spreadsheet as your historical cost when you're importing uh, a starting balance. So hopefully I've that, that is going to give you the answer. And then the quantity as of date, again, I'm putting the, the ending of the previous year, assuming that's what I'm doing. I'm bringing in an opening balance of inventory. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Okay, so I just save it as normal. It's just, it's just an Excel. Save it. Go into QuickBooks here. Click on Browse. Open up my Excel. Click Open. Then I'm going to click on Next in the bottom right. Then it's going to tell you, okay, so how are we going to match up all the fields? And because this is a template, everything should match up. The only one that didn't match was reorder point, but I'll just select it here. I don't know why that did didn't match, but there it is. And you want to make sure that all your fields are mapped. Okay, so that's really what you're looking for, making sure all your fields are mapped. And that template that I was showing you is actually all tied to this. And when I click on Next, it's going to bring you a preview. It's going to give you three really important checkboxes that says, we sell this item, we buy this item, and we track inventory. So when you import it as an inventory part, 
automatically these three checks are there. There's a little check mark here that says overwrite all values. And that's only really when you starting to up, when you bring in an update. So if I were to update my sales price or update my account or update my, my description, I would do it through here and then click where it says overwrite all values. But in this case, um, uh, this is not an update. This is actually a, an import. Now, if any of the accounts don't match you, or any of the information, you're going to have a little red box here. Like, for example, the account is called cost of goods sold hyphen cost of goods sold. For some reason, I didn't choose the right name. So I just hit, hit the drop down and change that. And then you can obviously just fix that in your spreadsheet if you don't want that error coming in again. So that's all. That's a preview of exactly what's going on before you do the import. And then you click on import. And you can bring up to a thousand at a time, I believe is the most I've been able to do. And then I'm going to click on the gearbox on the top right. And then I'm going to click on products and services. And then I should see my glass fountain. Yeah, there you go. There's my glass fountain item. When I click on edit, that would take me to the edit screen. There's all the information that I imported. Notice that there's a 20 start quantity on hand, which is what I imported. And there's a little uh, link here that says starting value. If I click on that link called starting value, it allows me to edit that initial entry. So I can edit the quantity on hand and the valuation. This is the only place inside QuickBooks that you can actually edit the valuation of, uh, of an item per unit. You can always edit or adjust quantity on hand, but you cannot ever adjust valuation other than this specific screen only screen that allows you to adjust valuation and actually have a, have a workaround for valuation adjustment, but we'll get to that later. And normally here you want to, this goes straight to opening balance equity. You probably want to send this to retain earnings, but if you're an accounting professional, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, then get your accountant involved to understand what exactly is this, right? Because this is really, really crucial when you're bringing in opening balances, especially for the current period. So I'm going to move this to retain earnings and hit save and close. And that's the only edit I wanted to make on that. Okay, so we're done with importing items from Excel.